Welcome to the seventh segment of A Journey Through Assyrian History. Today we will discuss Ashur and Old Assyria. Ashur, as we came to know, is the city at the heart of the Assyrian heartland, the very center of Assyria. Really the name Ashur, the city of Ashur, and the god Ashur became the name of the Assyrian people. Assyria centered on the city of Ashur was not known as a warrior society, despite the image that many of us have. The city-state Ashur had also not been known for its prowess on the military field. The kingdom of Assyria later became a military power, but at this time, in the early stages of its history, circa 2000 BC, Ashur was a very wealthy trading city. The people of Assyria centered on Ashur became involved in a very lucrative trade and managed various trading colonies, especially in Anatolia. The Assyrians exported tin and textiles in return for gold and silver. Assyrian rulers, as well as private families, were involved in this trade. Assyria became a very wealthy state, centered around this holy city. And even after the Assyrian capital was moved from Ashur to Kalhu by Ashur Nasser Paul II in the 800s BC, the city remained very important and had a special place for its people, its kingdom, and its empire in the thousands of years to come. To this day, in fact, Assyrians consider Ashur as a historical spiritual center, of course, in the abstract. There are no more Assyrians living in the city of Ashur today. However, its memory lingers with Assyrians of today in a rather spiritual sense. The early excavations so show that the city of Ashur existed at the site as early as 3, 3rd millennium BC. The oldest foundations discovered to date are those beneath what is known as the first Ishtar temple in the city of Ashur, which probably formed the base for the earlier temple as Mesopotamians generally built the same sort of structure on the ruins of the earlier one. Ashur was an important center, especially for trade. As various city-states rose in Mesopotamia, Ashur maintained its position as a holy city and the heart of an Assyrian state, ultimately giving the Assyrian state its identity, its national ethnic identity, that was to cover many different cities and villages in the heartland of Assyria. Within this city, various professions developed, especially around the growing trade with various cities, in particular with Anatolia. As trade and investment grew, so did Assyrian laws and administration, le leading to greater sophistication in law and government. After all, trade brought money, and money brought greater sophistication for the Assyrians. Scholars are still deciphering some 23,000 tablets that were found from around 2000 BC in the city of Karum Kanish. Karum were various trading centers for the Assyrians, and Kanish was a center in Anatolia, the heartland of what is today Turkey. One scholar, <clears throat> Paul Kriswick, writes, For several generations, the tra trading houses of Karum Kanish flourished, and some became extremely wealthy, ancient millionaires in Assyria. However, not all business was kept within the family. Ashur had a sophisticated banking system, and some of the capital that financed the Anatolian trade from the long-term investments made by independent speculators in turn for a contractually specified proportion of the profits. Now, this was a significant development. As Assyrians became wealthy, more professions and skills were needed to maintain that wealth. Legal protections required courts and lawyers. Security required a police force, and so on. 
there was a need for taxation and regulation of borders. Assyrian society was being transformed. Still, however, Assyria at this time was not a military power. Certainly not anything that we later will come to know. The profits made from this trade, which were very lucrative, were spent largely on the city of Ashur, on the renovations and modifications to private homes and public buildings. And so Ashur became the glittering city upon a hill. Through trade, Assyria prospered and expanded, and Ashur became the capital of Assyria by the second millennium BC. Walls will, were built around the city to enhance its natural defenses, even though these defenses were quite advantageous on their own through uh, the outcrop and also through the river Tigris. The city of Ashur was becoming the seat of a state that was to develop during what is termed the, in the Middle Assyrian period and later an empire during the Neo-Assyrian times. As the capital of Assyria flourished, the Assyrian state expanded its territory outwards. The Assyrian king Shamshi Adad I, 1813 to 1791 BC, drove out the invading Amorite tribes who were infringing on Assyria's borders, secured the borders of Assyria against further incursions. Although Ashur grew under the reign of Shemshi Adad I, it then came under the rule of the famous Hammurabi, king of Babylon, 1792 to 1750 BC. Hammurabi considered Ashur as a holy city, of course, just as it was considered by its own people, and treated its citizens well and respected the gods and temples. However, he limited the lucrative Assyrian trade with Anatolia. This was, of course, a setback for the Assyrians in the heartland, but Assyria maintained its integrity nevertheless, as a state and its people went about their lives. Though Ashur's prosperity suffered a decline at this time. After the death of Hammurabi in 1750 BC, Assyria underwent instability and competition between the various states for power in this region took hold. The Assyrians eventually regained their stability, regained power under King Adasi, 1726 to 1691 BC, and then competed with the Mitanni for power. Finally, the rise of the Assyrian King Ashur Ubalat I in 1353 to 1318 BC led to the defeat of the Mitanni. He was followed by King Adad Nirari I, 1307 to 1275 BC, who conquered the Hittites and took their lands to create the first semblance of what came to be the Assyrian Empire. Assyria's main rivals had lost their power over the region completely, leaving Assyria to become the center of power in the Near East. This led Assyria to a new stage in history. It was on its way to becoming the most powerful state and empire ever to be known in the world. Join us next time when we discuss the creation of a stronger state for the Assyrians during the Middle Assyrian period, setting the stage for the creation of an empire in the Neo-Assyrian period. Thank you and see you again.